Step three is planting native warm season grasses. Your field has been prepared for planting and the seed bed is firm. Now you must determine how much seed to plant, when to plant, and how to plant. The amount and kinds of seeds you will need depends on your objective. For example, a planting for a wildlife habitat usually requires less seed per acre than a planting for haying or grazing. Plantings designed to improve quail habitat may include heavier amounts of the shorter grasses like little blue stem and side oats gamma. Taller grasses like big blue stem and Indian grass may be preferred for pasture plantings or to provide deer cover. However, when these grasses are planted at heavy levels, the resulting grass stand can be too thick for quail. Since there are many variables involved with seeding rates, it's best to consult with your NRCS representative or private land conservationist for a recommendation to fit your goals. The preferred time for planting can vary due to a field's location within the state, seasonable accessibility, and type of equipment used. Generally, there are two periods for planting. The first is the dormant season that occurs between the 1st of December through the end of February in southern Missouri or mid-March in northern Missouri. If your seed mix contains native forbs or wildflowers, this is the best time for planting your mixture. The second planting period occurs in the early growing season starting around the middle of March and continuing through the middle of June. In general, planting earlier is better. Missouri is a large state with seasonal weather conditions varying from north to the south. These differences will also affect available planting times. Fields in the southern part of the state can be accessible to planting two to three weeks before fields in the north are ready. Native grasses can be planted with a wide variety of equipment, including seed drills, which have specially designed picker wheels and agitators inside the seed box for pulling the seed into oversized drop tubes. Also available are large spreaders, such as Brilliant Seeders with a brush-style agitator. Smaller ATV attachments designed for seeding native grasses are useful. These small seeders also have specially designed picker wheels. Choosing the right equipment depends upon the planting conditions. A no-till seeder with a special attachment for native grass seed is ideal for drilling seed into deadened stands of grass or relatively smooth crop fields with finer soil. Remember, drills made for ag crops such as wheat or soybeans may be a poor choice in planting native grass. You'll want to use the right tool for the right job. When using a drill, calibrate it before using. Check planting depth to make sure seed is no more than one-fourth inch deep and check the no-till coulter adjustment. Starlight line coulters should only be used to cut through above ground residue. They should not cut into the soil. Do not plant when the ground is wet. As the ground dries, it can crack down the coulter cut. Some sites can be too rough and rocky for a no-till drill. In this situation, the seed can be mixed with fertilizer and broadcast with a spreader. With any broadcast seeding, care should be taken to ensure adequate seed-to-soil contact. Ideally, there should be at least 30 to 50 percent bare grounds prior to seeding. Small, rough sites with little residue are best handled with an ATV broadcast spreader. When using any kind of broadcast seeder, you'll need to burn or otherwise remove residue to ensure good seed to soil contact. Calibrate the seeder before using and roll or cultipack after seeding. Native grass seeds are extremely small, therefore most seeds are planted no deeper than 1 8 to 1 4 inch deep. When properly planted, you will see some of the seed lying on top of the ground. This is normal. The seed can still germinate and grow. Drilling native grass seed deeper than one fourth inch will increase the likelihood of failure. Specialized equipment such as native grass drills is not available for rent in every county. Therefore, your options are limited to the equipment available. Equipment is usually reserved on a first come, first serve basis. Reserving equipment as early as possible is recommended. 
Whichever seating method is used, be sure that you are able to properly calibrate the equipment to deliver the right amount of material. A planned seeding rate of six pounds of PLS seed means putting on more bulk seed depending on the PLS percentage of your seed. If you plant a mixture of native forbs along with your grasses, never put the seed in the drill box until you arrive in the field to be planted. Otherwise, it will settle to the bottom of the drill and not get planted uniformly throughout the field. It is best to add a pre-measured amount on top of the grass seed in the drill box when you are ready to plant or mix it with the grass seed. Some types of native forb seed may be added to a small seed attachment on the drill. To summarize planting, you need to determine the best grass species mix and seeding equipment to use. Plan for the time of year for your planting. Make arrangements to rent or borrow equipment as early as possible to assure availability. And you'll need to prepare your site and control existing weedy competition before you plant.